Good morning, it's Tuesday, April 14th, and we're going to do another video here, specifically picking up where we left off yesterday, covering the ticker weed, and also maybe a mutual fund here. So, besides that, I mean, um, I'm just getting sick of like seeing these COVID stats shoved in my face everywhere I look. I mean, um, obviously it's affecting us all, but, um, you know, like, the more that the more time that I'm forced to sit at home and look at this stuff, the more upset that I'm really getting about the the different ways that I mean the, the narrative is being spun and um, really now I, I just I mean personally I just see it see it as a push on human freedom you know I mean um, it's just kind of crazy we're living in this world anyway I'm just gonna bring that uh, bring that all around. And um, yeah, we'll do we'll do these charts and just get back on focus here. So let's look up the ticker weed here. Okay, so we're gonna look at Canopy Growth Corporation, and this is probably one of the biggest. Well, I think it's the largest company in Canada for weed. And um, just imagine, right? I mean, um, now that when you think in hindsight, hindsight always twenty twenty, but Canada was one of the first of the industrialized nations to legalize marijuana, and um, you could say it's a big push for um, freedom and individual rights, but it makes me just a little bit more um, conspiratorial when you think, like, why did they want the population to be so enamored? Why did they want no resistance to what would, would plausibly be to come? So, for me, like, I have nothing personally against, you know, individuals using this, but... Um, just as a full nation, Canada is super, super pushoverish, um, and well, we'll see, we'll see, we'll just uh, we'll, we'll see. My mind's a little bit flabbergasted with that, but um, let's just look at some of the fundamentals here with this um, market cap seven billion. That's a little bit larger than I thought, so that's quite a bit of. That's a it's a pretty big company. Um, I think this would be like the biggest company. I think it hasn't had as volatile moves. I mean, you don't see as negative stuff as it. Like a lot of t during the whole little run, I think you could say that there is a race between Canopy Growth, Aurora Cannabis, um, maybe Alfria, and there's a couple other ones in there. You know, there's they're all competing for the race to be the winner. I mean, and um, from that little bull run of uh, the marijuana market, we've seen we've seen a pretty healthy correction. So. Back here, right before 2017, yeah, this would be been the time to get in here. As you can see, it somewhat formed a cup, like so, a large cup right there, and um, we had a challenge right here halfway through, but um, didn't break break through till right about here. And um, looking at this actually from a technical point uh, standpoint, just to get more onto what we're doing here. Um, you could have said, man, look at that, look at that. So that's like an ideal trade that I want to find more of, like right there. So when you when you see like a huge cup form in this this um, company right there, a huge cup, a cup, like a huge bear market cycle, and you've seen it start coming up, and what did it do? It started consolidating within a pretty tight range here, like, well, tighter than it usually was, and you could have suspected that, hey, this might be getting close to a move here. And um, you could have played a bigger range like this if you're playing more long term. Or you could have even you could have even tightened it up as it was getting into this area right there. And um, yeah, there's different ways that you could look at that. But I mean, if you're playing with the month bars, you might have something like this. But if you're, let's zoom it in a little bit more to see what that detail looks like. Um, let's see if we can get situated here again so here on this week sense you um, yeah I'm just making sure I got the right thing you could see yeah we're bouncing along here and uh, well we have a, a double a double well it's not quite let's say we just moved it up a little bit you could have said right here could have been a pretty good stop loss at 372 and um, you're hoping for that breakout above 349, so you, uh, uh, 439, excuse me. You could have played this a couple different ways. You could have waited for the confirmation right here after it broke out of this little seam. So let's just zoom in a little bit more. Um, 
Let's see if we can get a little bit of an idea what the price action was saying back here. And I haven't looked at this beforehand, so. Yeah, so, like, especially as it starts playing out, it starts probably becoming more and more of an enticing, enticing, uh, buy here. I mean, I think I'd be happy with any kind of buy within this range right here. Like, you could say it was hovering between this range, 410 and 372. And that would have been a pretty nice little area to enter in. And let's say you could have had a stop loss right here. You could even have it like, let's say, down like so right there. A little bit more modest. Um, depends on how tight you want to play these positions. But um, you could have you could have really had something tight here um, as it's coming coming through. Um, It's tough to say the exact point where you should have entered into this. And I think the point's kind of made. Like, when we when we can have a pretty narrow entry into something that we like, and we have a, a pretty tight stop there, that is, um, that is the time to get into these things. So, two different ways that you could have played this is that you could have just wait, waited for, let's say, the break above the 439 right there. And then, um, well, we have a higher high, and then we establish a higher low, and we could have we could have entered in, let's say, somewhere like right here. We could have entered in right there at 586 if you wanted to wait for confirmation that hey, we are going to be going up here for sure. So that would have been one play. You could have waited for confirmation, but I think with this setup, you should have just bought right at 430, um, 439. Um, just because you've seen like such a long-term setup like that, and even right here, you could have said that. Looking at this, I mean, it's slight, but right here, four, uh, 371, 379, 389. We're establishing really in here too, higher lows, and the high, 403, 411, 420. 24 so that also is kind of showing a nice uptrend in here hey so we're getting these establishments so each one of these you could have said you could have been kind of raising up that stop loss too you could have been raising it up like this that's another option you could have done but um i think the bigger way you look at this thing is that if you were if you knew that um uh, weed was being legalized and we're now having a whole market open and it's all going to be speculation you should have known that shit this is gonna this is gonna run because that's what it's all based off of right so right there that's kind of just a really good example of how if you see something in a huge cup formation like we could say maybe uh, gold is right here you know maybe gold and silver somewhere maybe silver still like down here gold's up here maybe it's um at 1700 maybe it's not going to bust through right there but if we, I think it's going to be a, a safe play anyway, right? Buying into these assets because eventually they will come up and they will beat that and they will go on their next run. Now, how long? What's the, what's the time frame? Nobody knows, right? But um, that's how these things work. And if you can start seeing like consolidation right before that last all-time high, I mean, it sets you it sets you up for a great trade, right? I mean, because what's the I mean, whatever whatever you wanted to set, like you could have set something like. Let's say that right there. That could have been a support too. 370. And especially once you started getting on it. I mean, once we busted up and got support at 370 right here. This is another confirmation. So we, we busted through that last prior high. We busted through here and we got supported. That could have been a great entry point right there. Because we have this now as our, as our, as our um, floor. And we could now gain steam and then we made that great push there so there's so many different things besides like the low uh the higher um the higher lows right here and the higher highs just a small little uptrend that starts the this is the point then we had that break up sat above that and we got supported here and then we took a bounce off so and with all that i mean you could have seen a little bit of a surge in momentum and then we kind of had a flattening here and then look at this to start pulling up and then it just start boom boom then we just had green bar after green bar so with this yeah it's like oh yeah man you should expect some of these big moves like this versus i don't always expect them if they're not um if they're not actually involved in the bigger 
cycle, right? So that's why looking at the different time frames is so important because otherwise you just don't really see the bigger cycle, right? So we have the bull run now in weed, right? We can see here clearly this cup right here. We can see clearly that cup right there that spanned from April 14 to 2016, right before, like right, right before 2017. So about two years that that market cycle went through. And right here, it looks like we're just probably starting it again, right? So I'm not saying that we're gonna get down to these prices, but just in the point of that, we could um, we could be seeing, I, I, you know, you don't expect weed to be breaking out next month above uh, all-time highs, let's just say that, right? Um, typically, anyway, when we're looking at this momentum, yeah, we've seen quite the shift down, right? So on this sense, it looks like we're trying to start flattening up, flattening out here, but let's see the lowest price right now. Let's just uh, delete some of these because they're not really applicable. That's super thick. I don't like the thickness of this line. Get this out of here. So we'll just put this a little bit more um, to current time frame. So yeah, it looks like right now though, some of the good things is that we're getting supported by this last high right there. So that serves as, that serves as something, right? But I could see action down here for a while. Um, uh, let's just see what else we can do. Um, I think I want to just take a quick look and see what the fib is here and just see if that has any relevance. Just take the top like so. See where we're retracing down. It looks like we kind of bust through there, so nothing too relevant, like so. Um, you can also do these the other way too. So from the top here, let's say if that is truly the bottom, we probably should expect a little bit of a bounce up into here, into let's say this thirty-six dollar range, this three eight two, this three eight five. You could easily say this should correct back up to something like this, and then maybe we'll have this kind of trickle down. So. This could be this could be easily kind of well it could um, yeah it'd probably come down a little bit and then we could see it kind of come back up to the 382 and then we could see this action kind of play in here and then depending on what's going on we could see something like a big thing like that and maybe maybe this one will go up because this is probably one of the major Canadian marijuana companies and um, well to pacify the population is uh, the, the name of the game right I mean so. We don't want people resisting. We don't want people, you know, being hard to control. That's usually not the thing. Um, if you wanted to, let's say, play that that bounce, I mean, you could you could maybe, let's say, draw some type of downward angle like so, like like that, and say, hey, when we have a clear, this is now that one dude strategy. But let's say let's let's say that we have another kind of confirmation right here. We get we get supported like twelve twenty. We see a bounce up. We get a higher high, higher low. That might be a position right here to buy in, and we might have a little rise up. But be aware that we might just come back down, right? Because that's how these waves work. And um, understanding the skeleton, you should know how to expect some of that stuff. So, but just to say that, um, looking at this frame right there, um, yeah. I'm not really sure, just because I think that there's such an underground market in Canada for the, the sales of marijuana that bigger companies like this, it's tough for them to be profitable, but if they're backed by the government and they're too big to fail, then they probably won't. But um, I think that most of this rise in, in price was a lot of speculation. So let me just take this from a, let's try to fit from a different low from here. still sucks but yeah when you have um big market runs based off of speculation typically you see huge downturns after too which would be evident from like cryptocurrency rallies and well i think a lot of these marijuana companies had such a big increase in price when you're looking at something from a dollar to you know 73 dollars like that's that's freaking outrageous 70 50 x right i mean um so it's it's only natural to see it fall back down to let's say 13 so 13 dollars from 70 some like how much did that actually lose so around 80 percent of its value it lost but it gained an astronomical amount during that bull run so you can see the value of speculation 6600 percent um and that's where you want to combine like the the macroeconomics the trends that are coming 
with, let's say, some good technical analysis. So with this, this could be coming back around and might be, this might be a, a nice little low point right here, right? This might be, let's say, in comparison, this might be a little point like this, hey? I would, I would liken it to that, like the first little leg down of this, and I would suspect that we got some more, you know, we got some more time to play out here. I'm not sure if it's that long time frame, but we could see another little dip below here. That's not crazy to see it maybe get supported in this range. And if that if that happens, then yeah, that that's just a possibility. You know, it's not going to basically mirror this exactly, but um, it's just looking at history and trying to make some educated guesses to what plausibly could happen. And um, yeah, we got that's why we look at these charts, right? To just see what has historically occurred and. Um, You never really do know though, so like this bottom right here. Like are we just... I don't think that's the case. <laughs> you know, it would be nice if that was. I mean, um... Yeah, I don't think I would do this yet, but I mean, it could be. It could be something like this. I mean, um, if everyone just starts buying off, buying all the weed, I mean, if we all got to stay at home and do nothing, I mean, I don't know. I don't think that that's going to be the case. I think there's too much pressure. Um, I think we can clearly see a five-wave structure in here, though. I think that's obviously a wave right here, like so. So I think this wave three is legit right there. Now it's just a matter of, is this really wave one right there? Or did I start this on the, the wrong position, right? So if this is it here, maybe that's more of the, the grand super, super cycle that we're looking at, right? And that's only if it's a really bullish thing. I mean, p things don't have to have grand bullish super cycles, right? It, it can just happen with some really good charts. I mean, with any chart, what you don't really want to see is, you know, it rolling over right I mean so that's where for me I'd be pretty hesitant about it dropping below this range right here and also I mean you you wouldn't really want it to I mean it it's not quite but you, I wouldn't want to see another little shoulder right here because that looks like a big old head hey <laughs> a big old head and um yeah I wouldn't want to see like let's say some type of you know shoulder be forming in there and um, see it fall back over that's not what I'd want to see at all so with this stock there could be potential for entry points in the in the coming months and weeks to come um, but for me there's no real reason that's saying that hey this is going to be shooting up right now I mean at the same sense if you've already lost so much of your value like if you only have a little bit of money in here I mean maybe it's worth doubling down and uh, waiting out this, or maybe you want to just, it's up to you, obviously, what you want to do with your position, but, um, yeah, it's looking like, I mean, it's kind of just, <laughs> this thing has been popped, right, all the air is kind of fizzed out, now it's, uh, now it's to be determined that, um, there's got to be some winners, you'd think, though, in the in the weed market, right? It's a billion. It's got billions of dollars invested into it. Um, I just don't know if this is ready. If this is kind of ready to start marching back upward, it could. It could, right? I mean, I'd really want to see it follow that right here. Um, we can see we're below this. I mean, this thing is definitely in a bear market, right? So, how long is this bear market going to be? That's that's to be determined. That's to be determined for sure. But it could be anything like a drawn out bigger bigger correction like we've seen in a lot of other charts like, i mean it's just in any chart right i mean let's just look at the gold what do we have uh, up and what do we have this drawn out phase right so right now canopy grows somewhere like right here and we're wondering hey is it the bottom should i buy in right now i don't know it, it, it's it's better than buying here i guess right but do you want to wait all that time frame so that's going to be your decision if you want to hold on this and I bought stuff in here, and then you just hold it, and you're just like, why the hell did I buy this? And then all of a sudden you sell, <laughs> it goes through the roof, and you're like, I knew it had something. I knew it had something, and I sold it right before. What did I do, right? So, 
by understanding these bigger super cycles, I mean, that's what you can almost see. Like, here's Bitcoin. I mean, here's the same thing, right? Look at this. It's so clear once you see it. Here's it up. Here's a huge little cup. Here as it is. What are we doing? We're doing a big cup. So you could have said, oh, buy right here. We came back up. No, we're, we're still forming this deep cup here, right? And um, I'm, not, I'm not really sure, but the bigger the market cap, the bigger the cycle. So right there, a little cycle, very small Bitcoin right here, even a bigger frame, right? When we look at that from 2017 to, let's just say, 2014 to 17, so three years. Three years that took, not two, three. From right here, we got 2013 to, well, <laughs> Like one year, right? I would, let's just say one year. So one, three. What would be the logical assumption of this cycle, right? I mean, it's tough to really think that we have a like an algorithm here that we can predict. Like, is it one, three, five? You know, is that the is that the is it one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven? Is that how these market cycles are going to work? Is that the actual, you know, is that what we should be expecting for the length of each one of these corrective phases as a becomes a bigger um, a bigger uh, business which takes more more capital more liquidity to actually holy crap that was messy um, to actually pump this market back up so when you look at that I mean you could say that maybe how long will this correction phase be in in weed and canopy growth right I mean but just to talk about the Bitcoin one right I mean right now we're basically 2018. 2020 we're already two years into it right so we're two two years into it two years since we've been two years of bear market literally two years of bear market and here we, we definitely had three years right three years before we reach all-time highs again and here I mean it's kind of like just thinking about that I mean it's not completely ludicrous to at least give yourself that um, possibility that this might be a longer time frame before we actually see it back up here. So it could it could literally be yeah 21, 22, right? Maybe 2023. 20, Who knows? But um, I think it's kind of it's almost uh, now I'm back on Bitcoin here, right? Because um, there's just so much stuff that's like being pushed for digital digital stuff, right? I mean, cash being dirty. I mean, besides the whole conspiratorial aspect of tracking everything you do. Um, because that's the real agenda, I mean, and yeah, there, there, there's just so much to talk about there, um, but yeah, I mean, a great technology like this is a dual-edged sword, right, so it's kind of, um, it's kind of, fear, it's frightening to think that, while blockchain has the possibility to track everything perfectly, and it could be either a closed ledger, that no one can look at or a public ledger that everyone can look at like Bitcoin. But when you implement that and say that we could give people digital identities and then track COVID-19 specifically based off of these individual identities and we can see who's got the vaccine and who hasn't and then we can use that information to dictate whether you're allowed to travel and stuff like that. It starts looking like George Orwell's 1984 or 1932 Brave New World and um, when you just take take out the message of the media and you look at, let's say, th those fundamental messages that have been portrayed, and if you look hard enough, th there's clear evidence that suggests that. I mean, you should be you should be um, at least aware that that stuff's being produced, and maybe I will do a video looking at or highlighting some other people's work, just uh, explaining that and just showing how companies like Microsoft and um, well, Mr. Gates himself is involved in creating this ID2020 chip and um, they're using specific companies involved with blockchain and um, it's just kind of crazy. I mean, you usually just think that's like kind of sci-fi shit and that's never going to affect us in our time, but here we're all stuck in our house and what's coming to save us, the vaccine, and what's it going to have in it potentially? Well, a tracking thing to make sure that we know who's got the vaccine so that we, you know, don't spread the virus, right? But um, that seems like a huge, huge, well, not just huge, I mean, that's the last straw. That's the last straw to sovereignty 
and you're giving up the last bastion of freedom and it's your actually your human body right you're giving up your human body for your for your free um for your safety your supposed safety so yeah i i guess i'm pretty strongly against that i mean i don't want to be um you know we're already watched from our phone from everything we do everything's watching and listening to us do we really need to have a freaking chip in us i mean that's just the next level for me i will not support that at all um good quote from ben franklin is those that will those will give up a little bit of freedom for safety deserve neither freedom or safety i kind of paraphrase that but um I'm not sure pertaining to what exactly he said that in. I might have um, used it in a different context, but I think um, the point is made clear that eventually people have to stick up for themselves, you know? Otherwise, it's just kind of the totalitarian uh, tiptoe where it's like, that, it's like that creep that pushes someone as far as they can, as far as their boundaries will allow and then back off and then keep on pushing a little bit further each time until all of a sudden they got to where they wanted and that's how i feel right now that there's like an invisible kind of um oppression of mankind happening right now and if you look into it enough you can see the actual the actual um skeleton of that too you know what i mean looking at these charts i mean looking at them into detail like i do just naturally you look at everything like this right and like i said before there is little versions of things within itself right and um it's just it's just kind of crazy you know i mean to see all that stuff happening around the world um yeah Eventually, I mean, I don't know how much longer I can uh, stand for it. I mean, a lot of times you hear those phrases. I mean, all it takes for evil to succeed is for, for good men to do nothing. Um, it's just a really crazy position to be in. Like, I don't... A lot of us don't have the medical background to stand up against Big Pharma and the politicians and then the whole population that has been convinced that, you know, that's the right way to go. I mean, but uh, to shut down business that serves people i mean is just um there's no solution within it right i mean there's no there's no i mean the solution can't be wor worse than the you know i think trump said something like that which is actually pretty good the solution can't be worse than you know the disease <laughs> and that's where we're going you know like a police state where your your freedoms are taken away for your safety and um it's it's really frightening i mean it, it, like you know i i mean i'm at the point when you know it's 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 very it's very disturbing to me um and yeah i'm just not really sure the level that i want to be involved with this on the front line um but at this moment in time i've just kind of stepped back and hope hope for didn't hope I kind of just hope that it wouldn't be this bad right that um, we wouldn't see such a huge push for taking human human rights right you can't go outside you can't communicate with friends I mean it's it's like just stop listening to the news and just see what's happening around you and um, you should be very scared I mean um, hopefully we can band together and prevent this from happening but to see it happen on so many different fronts is really the really disturbing place right i mean to see it financially like we can ex understand it just from this perspective right i mean just in the pure sense of finance like the printing of the money will cause inflation which will destroy the economy it's happened so many times okay we get it we understand we can see it purely from that aspect right then we can see it, see it from that civil liberty standpoint and say, well, besides like all the ex, you know external factors, what's really happening? Well, it's more or less like self-quarantine or martial law. You have to stay inside under penalty of extreme fines here in Canada. You know, I mean, if I've seen stuff in Ontario, like if you didn't shut down your business up to $100,000 fine or a year in jail, that sounds pretty intense, right? 
And uh, how much further could that be? I mean, if you get a, you could get a thousand dollar fine if you you were you came back in from the country and you got went out get groceries. So if this sounds like the country you want to live in, then uh, follow follow the the status quo. I mean, at the same sense, I mean, we're all kind of subject to the law, right? I mean, I've had to shut down my business because do I want to be the first one in the court? I don't have a lawyer, a friend, or anyone, so I don't want to have to be out there. You know, basically falling on the sword for the population that won't even support someone like me standing up for their freedom. So it's just, it's really, it's really like troubling to be in this position where you might have a, a deep understanding of what's happening, but you can't even express it to the average person because it's like literally the Matrix. They'll sit there and defend it, right? It will, it will shake their belief system so hard that it just rattles them. And um, it's not like people that look into conspiracies have all the answers right i mean this is just looking up information that's out there for everyone to look at if they had the time and curiosity and could sense that something is not being told to them correctly so when you look at it just in a purely financial standpoint you can see okay the dollar is going to collapse i mean maybe they can save it i don't think they can regardless it's a planned financial collapse it, it that's what it has been right Look outside. No one's sick. It's just like it's a it's a it's a fucking joke. I'm sorry to say this, but I mean, eventually, like how how can we just stay at home forever? You know, like the amount of change that they're gonna try to implement is gonna be crazy. You won't be able to go on vacation unless you have your vaccine. You won't be able to leave the country for your safety, right? It's gonna kill you with kindness. And um, I'm just really hoping for a big pushback from the population. And I guess eventually, I mean. Someone has to stand up for everyone, right? I mean, you see a, a few people standing up, and um, I guess it can invoke the courage in us all, right? But um, it's just tough when there's, I mean, I've kind of known about this for years and years and years, but um, most people don't want to hear it because it, it ruins it ruins their, their mental nirvana, right? I mean, but now we, we don't have a choice. We don't have a choice to either... You know, we can't even go back to sleep if we want to. I mean, we, we're just stuck here where they're saying that you can't have business, you can't have social contact, you have to stay alone, you have to isolate, and you have to get mandatory vaccines. And it's just like, where am I living? Like, this isn't the home of the glorious and free. I mean, this is this is a totalitarian tiptoe towards, like, communist China. I mean, and how can we use those countries as an example of those are the people that did it right. They, they helped flatten the curve. Yeah, as they welded people inside and they died in their homes, they took all their rights away, they got social programming, they got facial recognition, they got social credit scores. If you go to jail in China, they'll literally <laughs> take a DNA sequence of you and if you match someone that needs the organs, guess what? You're going to get cut up and they're going to take your organs and they're going to just put you in the, the crematory, right? So people don't realize that that's what China can do, and they did throw a lot of people into concentration camp type of places what, during this epidemic, and how much further could they go? Well, they're right on the precipice of just killing people en masse in concentration camps, and the Canadian government wants to use that as the example to, you know, curb, flatten the curb. Like, I mean, um, that seems like a very, very scary thing. I mean, especially looking at history and looking at the history of Russia and China and seeing that those um, those concentration camps were formed under the pr pretense of equality for all, and uh, the road to hell is often paved with good intentions, and it looks like we're going to hell, and we're going to hell fast, and I don't want to sit here and fear monger, but that's, why do you think I'm talking about gold? Because it's not because I'm, like, hoping that I'm not right. I'm hoping that gold, you know, I don't think there's any way that, you know, even if we turn this all back around, gold's going to have a good run regardless of what's happening because they've already hurt the dollar so much they've just destroyed it now it's going to be how fast will our personal liberties be taken in conjunction with this economic collapse and yeah you want to not listen you want to not listen to um the government well guess what your aid's gone right so for me it's it, we get put in a pretty tough situation do you want do you want your money from the government then shut the fuck up do you want your um business um um check shut up and um 
even if you were to go against the status quo, which I'm going to look into more, what is the real penalties? What what am I really risking? Am I risking a year in jail to open up my business to serve the community? And if that's the case, I mean, this is just beyond ridiculous, you know? I mean, I may never be able to leave the country if I don't want to get a mandatory vaccine because then I'm not safe to travel. I mean, I feel like I'm already in jail. And um, I'm just hoping that I'm just um, gotten more a little bit paranoid and that this isn't all going to come all in one step. This is just one step towards the big push. And they're going to realize that people are going to not take it. Then they're going to come back and take it back a step. I'm hoping that that's the case and they're not going to just try to shove this down our throats. And um, the thing is, you never know with people being so unaware. They haven't looked at anything besides what they've been told. People being so unaware about how money works, how politics work, how control works. I mean, what history is, what you know, what's happened in history. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, it makes me think about the, uh, makes me think about the uh, the fall of Rome, and that happened the same there. And in Rome, what happened was that they they didn't really they didn't have printing presses, right? But what they had was they melted down the coins that they had and mixed it with impurities so they had gold and silver coins copper coins and they mixed them with impurities and that was their form of printing money so let's just talk let's just finish through the the fall of the roman empire right so they started printing printing money as in, in essence or melting down their gold and silver coins and mixing it with other metals so they could literally make more coins right eventually what happened was that the prices started to increase right well go figure they, they were printing money so the prices, let's say, of a sword start going up so high, let's say, whatever, let's say $100 back in the day. And, um, well, it was 100 then it was, what, 150 then it was 200 then it was 300 and the prices kept going up, right? Because they were printing money. So you needed more, more money to pay for the goods. And eventually... It got so high that you know no one could buy a sword so what what the roman empire did was that they mandated that the blacksmith charge a hundred dollars for a sword by penalty of death so it'd be like co-op now you have to charge this for a, a gallon of milk we have to okay the next step was that blacksmiths didn't want to do blacksmithing anymore why because it was non-profitable so they're like well i can't i can't be a blacksmith i can't even make a living Right, so they're like, okay, well, I'm gonna do something else. I'm gonna farm or something, and then the government came in again and said, every blacksmith's son has to be a blacksmith, and the blacksmith obviously had to keep doing it under penalty of death. So, from the printing of the money or melting down the coins and printing money, essentially, the prices went up in Rome to the point that people couldn't pay for them, and then the government mandated a forced price. Which then people wanted to do a, didn't want to do the service anymore because they couldn't make a living, and then they mandated that they had to do that service under penalty of death. So, just just to take a little history lesson at the Roman Empire and see how that happened there. So, if it doesn't frighten you from the government printing all this money while we're already in trillions of dollars of debt worldwide, right? Let's just let's just pull this one up again. I'm on a little bit of a rant right now because. I just can't help it. It's just, I, it's, you know, waking up and looking at this stuff every day sucks, right? So, when we look at this stuff, I mean, who are we all in debt to? When you when you say, like, the government of Canada owes trillions of dollars, we're so in debt, how can we print more money? The government of the U.S. is printing trillions of dollars. How could we, who do we owe this money to? Who the hell is the world indebted to? You know, like... How can we never get out of debt? It's because this is who we're indebted to. The central banks. The central banks, right? You never get told of these people. That's that's who our countries are indebted to. So, 320 trillion global debt. Look at this. We're 300 trillion in debt. To who? What country? What nation are we? What nation? No nation. The central banks. The central banks, right? Who manipulate the economy. 38 trillion in housing debt. So all this stuff 
This isn't by accident. You think these central banks are trying to make as much money as they can? They basically have enslaved the world to them. They've enslaved the world to them. And now we're all sitting here printing money, just like basically scooping out of the scooping the water out of the the sinking ship, right? And anyone that tells you will say, "How can we pay? How can we get out of it? How can we get rid of this debt countrywide?" And they'll say, "It's it's we can't. There's no way that you can get out of it. We we're paying too much interest on it. And we can't. There's no way out." So the only solution is the collapse of the whole fiat system, in that sense, right? And that's when the new system or the digital currency could be put in there. And then you couple that digital tracking system and we got the, you know, like, do I need to go on? Like, it's just kind of, once, once you start learning enough from different segments, it's just like, holy smokes, like, what the heck is going on? How did we get to this point when um, our governments have sold us out to the central banks that are basically, I mean, I like to use the analogy of the Iron Bank on Game of Thrones and even though that Xerxes was the ruler of the seven kingdoms she bent the knee to one person and that's the bank and um, that's how the world is right now so a lot of times you see this stuff and it's modeled off of those things so it's just kind of crazy when you realize that while well, the Federal Reserve is one of those central banks and guess what they're not they're a private company right so when we have when nations are indebted to private companies that have been um, they're not brand new. These are the people that have ruled the world, and we thought that we got rid of the, these people when we had all these civil revolutions, and they, they kept around, and they eventually sucked their teeth back in, and they started manipulating everything, not by force, but through subtle little things, like establishing the Federal Reserve, establishing the World Health Organization, the UN, like, I mean, all these groups are non-elective officials, right? So why would, why would you listen to the UN? What, who elected them? They're unelected people, right? And we're all just like, listen to these people. Man, the banks, these are the banks made those organizations. You know, that, that is the real sad thing. Most of these people, most of these organizations are all controlled by these banks. So if you don't realize that, you're getting spoon-fed disinformation, and that's where most people, we're li literally living in the matrix, literally. And um, it just, it's just, it's really crazy. I mean, we're, we're taking steps into increasing to the matrix, right? Like, literally, like, people will not even know that they're human or alive soon. Like, that, that, that's a little bit crazy, but you could say some people are there already. You know, they've lost their humanity. They don't know any, they don't have any real human values. I mean, oh, okay, what's this? <laughs> Ticker symbol weed. <laughs> okay, yeah. We're going to just look at one more and then um, I'm going to start working on something a little different. And um, guys, let me know if you want me to look at any other um, thing, but I think I just uh, <laughs> exposed some of my personal beliefs there and take them or leave them but um it's unfortunate i mean i i hope i hope i'm wrong i hope i'm wrong on all that but i've been looking at this stuff for 10 years or so and um it's just kind of crazy um anyway i was gonna look at this mutual fund here but i it doesn't look like it's pulling up and that's quite the rant so regardless of all that's uh negative um, information that I was talking about there is there is positivity and um, it's really nice to see some people just speaking out and I've seen I've been seeing more and more of it which has inclined me to do the same and um, most of us most people that know about the, the deeper reality that's happening are just kind of we're, maybe we're cowards we're a little bit coward cowardice because we know that there's going to be a lot of pushback and there's going to be a lot of um, attack, personal attack from friends and family and even just, uh, you know, society to take such a, you know, opposite viewpoint of the, the collective herd mentality and then from individual places too. Like, I don't want to really get um, regulation coming down and getting my taxes audited and I, I would suspect nothing less if you want to be a dissonant, right? If you want to go out there and speak against the government, 
I mean, look at what they did to, like, environmentalists. They're labeled terrorists, right? I mean, you don't realize how crazy the world that we're living in. So it's almost at the point that little, little people like me and you have to stand up and say no more. Like a ground up movement saying, hey, we can't have this stuff happen anymore. For me... I will. I. I can. The line in the sand for me is a mandatory vaccination. That is just like utter. You might as well just shoot us all in the fucking head. I mean, sorry to use that language, but realistically, you know, what if they had this in Auschwitz, Germany? That's what I'll leave you with, right? What if they just had a vaccine that people willingly lined up for? They wouldn't have to gas you, would they? You know, what if they had a delayed effect? What if there had no effect right away? What if it wasn't that bad for you physically for a while, but it was just a way to oppress civilization? Now you don't have to have your phone because they can track you anywhere. Now you said something online socially. You said that you didn't like um, the government in power. Well, we're docking you. We got your digital tracking device. Now you're not allowed to travel. And now you're welcome to China because that's how it is right now there. So if you want to look at what could possibly be here, Look at China because that's what they're trying to model. So I don't want to live in that world. I will not get that vaccination. I will, you know, I will make a big, big, big stink about it. I mean, realistically, I mean, it's almost the bottom line. Like, I will make a stink and say, you might as well kill me right now. I mean, um, because I'm not getting that. I mean, now, what choice may I have? Will they come to their, our doors and mandate that? I don't think so. I don't think they'll take it that far, but... They'll probably produce a system where they'll exclude you from the system if you don't get it, right? So they'll restrict your travel. They'll restrict your ability to work or have a business. And um, it's just it's just so sad to see that, you know, that's where we could be heading. And um, if that's really the world that Canada is going to be imploring, like, for me, I have to even, like, consider maybe I could be trying to get the first flight out of here. Um, but with that travel restriction, maybe they'll say, no, you can't go anywhere, buddy, until you get your chip. And um, that's just like, I don't know what I'm going to do if that's what happens. So I think that the only thing I can do now is try to spread a little bit of awareness through people to people, you know, person to person, and try to stop this before people have the audacity to, you know, go along with this. Because just look at some history, see through the lies. And, uh, yeah, protect yourself financially, right? Because regardless of what happens, I mean, financially, this will have a huge effect, right? And that's why I started this channel was for the financial reason. But um, just to, just to spread it out a little bit and talk about some more macroeconomic stuff that plausibly and possibly could be happening, right? I could be totally wrong with all my, with everything I just said there. And I'd be more than happy to be wrong. More than happy. And um, it's just, uh, yeah, I just I think that we're going to have to take a stand here. So it seems that way. And um, I guess one, I think I'll just leave it at that. But um, this isn't, this isn't, this channel's not supposed to be about that. But call it a video. Thank you. Have a good day. Stay safe. And not in the sense of being scared to catch a virus out there. Stay safe in your mind. Don't let it get polluted by people whispering lies into it. Be critical but open. Knock and you shall, you know, receive what is there for you. Um, take care, everyone. God bless, okay?